Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon. Um, today we're back again, and uh, we have another guest today. And uh, we're here with uh, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hi, Paul. How are you doing? I'm all right. Um, uh, today we're going to look at another blog on my website, and we're going to talk about it. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, um, Peter, can you just tell us about your channel? Yeah, I'm Peter. You've just introduced me, and my channel is called Thailand Bound, and I talk about all things Thailand. All right, that's pretty uh, short and sweet. Um, today we're going to talk about a blog that I've got here. It's called Tipping in Thailand. Mm -hmm. What's your uh, What's your experience of tipping in Thailand? Um, leaving tips for the service staff and the girls, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I am a big believer of it in Thailand, definitely. I mean, um, <clears throat> have you got any thoughts on it before I tell you mine? Um, I'm actually from Scotland, and uh, growing up, I never left tips. It wasn't part of um, where I was growing up in. It wasn't part of, like, Scottish culture, I believe, right? So I didn't actually experience it until I came to Thailand. Mm. And then it was kind of like a bit of a learning curve, made some mistakes, maybe tipped too much and some some occasions didn't tip enough so i think this blog will be useful to people who maybe they come from countries where uh they don't have this tipping culture mm. yeah. about yourself yeah i mean i you know it's the same all over the uk we're not really uh i've been to this america a couple of times they, they, it's it's they all tip over there we don't generally tip here um growing up like you we didn't tip but it's a, a big part. It's not just Thailand. The Asian culture, it, it, tipping is a big thing. And uh, in Thailand, yeah, I do I do tip just about everybody who provides some kind of service to me. All right. Yeah, I've got uh, on my blog, we'll have a look at it here. I'll just build it up. I've got on my blog some common situations where uh, you, I, I have experience of like tipping the staff and sometimes maybe you, uh, sometimes where you, I wouldn't tip the staff or the, or the service staff, right? So um, mm. what we'll do first is we'll just go through it and I'll go through it first and then I'll just quickly read it and then I'll get your uh, opinion on it. Okay. All right. Uh, tipping in Thailand, where, when, and how much? Uh, tipping in Thailand is commonplace in many situations uh, for some, such as myself, who come from non-tipping culture countries, it can be confusing when deciding when to tip and how much to tip. As such, I've, as, as such, I've created this blog to help uh, Thailand newcomers and those unfamiliar with Thailand's tipping culture. So the first thing first, this blog is a, a rough guide. Like I said, I don't have much experience before coming to Thailand. Maybe some people from like the US, they've got, they'll have their own um, experiences of tipping in America. And then when they come to Thailand, maybe some things are similar, so maybe some things are different. Uh, so this is kind of like a starting point, and maybe we can uh, also get some comments from people who are watching. And when I upload this video to YouTube, and we, I'll, maybe I'll add it to the blog as well. One concern when tipping in Thailand is knowing how much to tip, not tipping too much or not tipping too little. One of my fears is that if I tip too much, maybe the the person thinks that I'm a bit stupid or, or maybe they think they can cheat me and maybe they'll try and cheat me. And also if you, uh, another fear is if you tip not enough, I worry that it's, it's kind of like an insult. So uh, I try to be careful. What's your opinion on that? Do you, are you comfortable with tipping or? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, in Thailand money talks, doesn't it? And, um, you know, they remember you. If you don't tip, um, you know, you won't get the service the next time you go in. I've had problems uh, tipping before, but not with the ties. I've had problems with other foreigners. For instance, if, you know, obviously if you go on holiday, you've got a lot more money to spend because you've been saving up all year. You go out to Thailand two, three weeks, you've got money to burn. You're what they call a two-week millionaire, right? And, uh, you know, you're, those sort of guys will give a couple of hundred baht tip, you know, 200, 100, 200 baht. If you're on a budget, if you live there as a full-time residence in Thailand, you can't afford to be throwing a couple of hundred baht every time you go into a bar. So I, I've had problems where 
not problems, but I've been sat in a bar years ago in Thailand and I've given the waitress a hundred baht because I've had two or three beers. She's looked after me. I'm very happy with the service and uh, I've given her a hundred baht. And the guy next to me who lives in Pattaya said something like, you're spoiling it for all of us because, you know, yeah, yeah. he only gives her 20 baht. And I'm like, well, you do what you want to do, mate, but don't get involved in my business. You know, if I want to give her a hundred baht, I'll give her a hundred baht. Some people think that you're like given the expectation that foreigners should tip that much mm. and then when they don't tip that much it makes them look bad but like you said it's um it's a bit funny another thing that um I, talking you're talking about frang there right also talking about some frang yeah yeah foreigners yeah uh there's also some asian groups of asians that are uh, known to be um excessive oh. tippers excessive excessive tippers yeah 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 I'm thinking more like the Japanese and the Koreans. You've got the other end of the scale as well, though. Yeah. I'm not going to name anybody, but there are people who, you know, certain countries where they just never tip anywhere they go. Mm. I, I, I guess it's, um, to, uh, for me, it's like I want to fall in the in between not too much and not too little. Mm. Mm. That's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll... The, the, way, the way I look at it, Paul, look, let's give it a, a very simple example. You know, if somebody wants to know how much to tip, for instance, firstly, it's up to you. They're not going to think you're stupid if you give them too much of a tip. It doesn't work like that in Thailand. If you give them a big tip, they'll, they'll appreciate it. They might expect it the next time. What you shouldn't do is go into a bar, give a particular waitress 300 baht, and then the next time go back and give her 50 baht because she won't appreciate that 50 baht she, because you've given her 300 baht. She'll expect that every time. You've got to give what you're comfortable with. Now, in my case, if I go into a bar, it depends how long I've been drinking in there, if I'm happy with the service or not. If I go into a bar and I have three or four beers and it's the same waitress looking after me and every time she sees my glass is empty, she comes up and asks me if I want another drink and it's great service and I'm happy, I'll leave her 100 baht. Why? Because it's £2.50, three US dollars. I've been in there for an hour, maybe more. You know, $3 if you tip that in the States, it's nothing, is it? Mm. Yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, if you're comfortable with it, then you, I, I guess um, you you're looking at it like um, yeah, they'll they'll accept they'll accept it. I'm I was more like I, I guess I'm more self conscious. Maybe trying not to get um, people thinking that I'm tipping too much. Um, no, I mean the the other thing is you've got to you've got to take each um, situation as you find it. For instance, that example I just give you for myself. If I wasn't doing that, if I had a friend who visited me in Bangkok and we were doing bar hopping, so we'd have one beer, pay up and go to the next one, and then pay up and go to the next one like that, I'd probably leave, I'd probably put 20 baht in the girl's hand, the one who's serving me, and I'd leave 10 baht in the tray, so 30 baht. So I could go in three bars and, and, and spend 90 baht rather than 100 baht in one. But then it's all relevant, isn't it, to what sort of service you're getting? Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Hmm. You just mentioned they're leaving like 10 baht, right? So 10 baht will be a coin because the minimum the minimum is um, mm. for notes is 20 baht, right? Yeah. In some circumstances, tipping with coins rather than notes is not accepted. It depends on what the situation is. The circumstances uh, where you, it's not, where they don't like to receive coins, I think it's, I'm, I'm not sure how to explain it, but um, I, my personal experience, I had like, some repairmen come to the come to my room to fix like my ac or something like that and actually they work for the the condo they work for the condo building the management company yeah, yeah they work for the management company and they get they're on a salary so actually if they come to my room i think some people w wouldn't tip them but um i do try to tip them so i was looking around my room and i was looking for some some money to tip them and uh, I only had coins, so I went to give them the coins, and I've got a Thai girlfriend as well, and she's, uh, I handed them the coins, they're like, no, thank you, no, thank you. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Maybe, they, first of all, they, they refuse the the coins, right? First of all, well, tip, not usually. Sometimes they'll refuse the the, uh, the tip, whether it's notes or coins. They're like, no, 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 take it, take it. And then if you keep on asking them, they'll take it eventually. Other times, they'll just take the tip without question but uh these these uh repairmen they refused the tip and i was like why why did not want a tip uh later after that my girlfriend told me that um maybe it's because it was coins and maybe coins are not as uh, well accepted as notes mm. it, 
other people, other like maybe taxi drivers, they would accept coins. Mm. Delivery drivers, they would accept coins, but some maybe some people wouldn't. Would you? Do you tip coins often? Yeah, I do. And I was just having a think when you were explaining that. It depends where you are. Now, for the sake of this uh, stream or video, whatever it is, most of the guys, if this is, if the whole purpose of this is to give them advice on tipping, a lot of the guys who watch this, if they don't know about tipping in Thailand, they'll be coming over on holiday, and a, a, a large amount, a vast amount of their time will be spent in the bars. Some guys, right? So I'll tell you a couple of interesting things about the tipping in the bars now. So firstly, when they bring you change back, so what happens in the bar, if you've not been to Thailand before, uh, you have your drinks, you don't pay for each drink, they bring the bill at the end. If you've had four beers, you'll get four slips of paper, they tally it up, they'll give you a bill, and then when you pay for it, they'll bring the change back on like a kind of chrome tray, and you pick it off the tray, they don't put it in your hand, okay? So what they do, because they know most foreigners leave the coins behind, so you know, if you're out on a night out and you see two 10 baht coins in the tray, if you don't want the coins and you leave them. Now, the Thais are very clever. They're good at what they do. So what they'll do, they'll give you 50 baht of coins when they don't need to. Instead of giving you a 50 baht note, say the change was 70 baht, instead of giving you a 50 baht note and two 10s, they'll give you the whole 70 baht in coins or, or a 20 baht note and coins because they know they've got more chance of getting a bigger tip because you'll leave the coins behind. That's the first thing I was going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. The second thing, the second thing is um, when you're very happy with, say, a waitress in a bar. Say somebody's been looking after you, and you think, "Well, I want to, I want to give this girl a hundred baht." So you put a hundred baht on the train. She goes off, and you think she's very happy. She doesn't get that hundred baht. What happens is that hundred baht goes into a tip box, and that gets shared between everybody in the bar. And I mean everybody, including the dancers, the doorman, the DJ, the girls behind the bar everybody so it gets watered down a lot now if you want that girl to have that tip all to herself what you need to do is put it in her hand because it's an unwritten rule in most of the bars in thailand that if you put the money directly in the person's hand that money you want them to have it if you leave it on the tray it's for everybody so what i tend to do if i've had a good night in a bar i'll put 100 baht in the waitress's hand and i'll leave 20 baht in coins on the tray that way everybody's happy that's a that's a really good point actually. I, I didn't add that to the blog yet, but I think I'll add that. Um, mm. So the money in the book actually is is shared amongst all the staff. Yeah, I'm going to plug one of my videos here if you don't yeah. mind. No, 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 I recently good. made a video called um, "It Was Twenty Things You Shouldn't Do in a Go Go Bar." That's on my channel, Thailand Bound. Um, the example I've just given you, I give twenty examples of uh, things like I've just spoken about. So I'll just give that a quick plug there if anybody's interested. What I'll do is I'll also um, I'll link to that video uh, in my description as well. Okay, well, when we're done, I'll send you the link. All right, cool. Okay, well, we're getting a lot of uh, interesting information here. The, so this is this is kind of like uh, an overview, how much 20 tip, tipping with coins. Now I want to look at like some situations where you might, uh, I want to look at more detail. So the first one is uh, tipping taxis and motorbike taxis. First things first, tipping taxi drivers in Thailand is common with both Thais and non-Thais. The most common tips given to taxi drivers is the rounding up of the taxi meter fare. Mm. Uh, arriving at your destination, maybe your the, the taxi meter will say like 57 baht. So what will happen is um, you can get your 3 baht plus whatever, 10, 20 baht, right? You can get your 3 baht change. But usually the drivers will round it up. So you'll, instead of giving you, if you, if you gave them 100, instead of giving you uh, 43 baht, they'll just give you 40 baht. Sometimes I found with Thai dry, taxi drivers, they'll, they'll hand you the 40 baht, just for example. And then they'll slowly like reach over and they'll go to get the coins to give you the, the, the 3 baht. And I'll say, no, thank you, no, thank you. Uh, I think that maybe that's just because um, maybe uh, uh, as a friend, maybe they, they don't want to look like they're overcharging or something like that. Mm. Uh, but with ties, they'll just hand the 40 baht back and then there's no discussion about it because they know that it's usually rounded up. And with the taxi motorbike drivers, they usually uh, agree a price at the start. There's no, there's no like, uh, it's usually 50 baht or 60 baht, 70 baht. It's not usually in the small digits. 
Mm. So there's not any change to worry about there, but usually I give them 10 or 20 by at the, at the end of that. What's your experience with uh, Thai uh, taxi drivers? My experience with Thai taxi drivers. <laughs> yeah, now you've uh, opened up a can of worms now. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I've been living and visiting Thailand for three decades, right? Mm. Um, it's changed a lot now. You've got companies like Grab where you can get your fare, you know, you're putting your destinations into the app and it will say it's going to cost you 110 baht. So you can work it all out before you go. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, taxi drivers love them or hate them. I mean, they're, they're very poorly paid. Uh, you know, you, you just got to be in Bangkok. You see there's thousands of taxis. You can go, you know, you can be in a taxi for 45 minutes and the fare's $5, you know. So that it's a really low paying job. So my own personal rule in the before they had uh, companies like Grab where you can do it all online, I'd get into a taxi. And if the guy put the meter on without me saying anything, I would give him a nice tip. So if I went from, say, Sukhumvit Soy 4 down to Soy, uh, down to Cowboy, for instance, the fare's about 45 baht, 48 baht. I'd give him 100 baht simply because I was happy that he didn't try to cheat me. I wanted to reward him and say, look, you know, you didn't try to cheat me. There's 100 baht. But that doesn't happen most of the time in those days. You jump in the taxi and they'll give you a fixed fare. They wouldn't do that for a tie. So I, I wouldn't entertain that. So for me personally, in answer to your question, if a taxi driver is a straight guy, then I'll always give him a tip because they don't make a lot of money. Uh, they work long hours. And if he's a nice guy and he's an honest guy, why not? You know? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, funny that you should say that because I'm exactly the same and I asked to go somewhere. If uh, the taxi driver looks like uh, he's trying to go some strange way or he's trying to do some fishy thing and cheat me out of uh, some money, which does mm. happen sometimes. Um, I'll not tip him. But if the, yeah. if the guy has uh, used his meter and he's looked like he's been, he's tried to get to the destination as quick as possible and safely as possible, uh, I'll give him a tip. 20, 30 baht, something like that. Yeah, and of course, there's a, there's a lot of other things that will come into the, his decision whether to just simply put on the meter and take you the quickest way or to try and rip you off. Uh, and one of the biggest things is the language. If you get in and you can just speak a few words of Thai to him, then he knows you've been around for a while. And he's more, he'll have more of a tendency not to kind of try to cheat. If you're just a foreigner and you get in and you, you know, you look like you're on holiday and you just speak totally in English, then yeah, I mean, it's not just Thailand. It happens all over the world, including London. Mm. So it's good to learn a few phrases. Uh, you mentioned there also about Grab. Do you, do you have a lot of experience with Grab? Do you tip Grab drivers? Yeah, yeah all the time. And, it, and it's just changed so much because in, in the old days, a lot of the nice, quiet soys, there were cheaper apartment buildings further down the soys, but people didn't want to rent them because when they wanted to go out at night and they came out, there were no taxis or motorbike taxis. So you had that long walk in the heat up to the main road, whereas now you've got Grab and it's fantastic. You just go onto the app you know, the, the map will pick up where you are. You, you order it, tell them where you want to go. It'll give you the price and they'll come right outside your condo building. So I use Grab all the time. They're, they're, they're just so much easier. And you don't have that that ongoing battle of, can you put the meter on, you know, and uh, and him trying to give you a fixed price. So I would recommend if you go out there, there's there's mo there's another couple of companies. There's not only Grab, use Grab and there's one or two others, but they're, they're great. They're great. It's almost like a game changer, right? And everything's always different. Oh, it's a big, it's a big game changer. Very, very big game changer for two reasons, uh, mainly. One is, as I've just said, if you come out of a really quiet, if you're in a really quiet location, there's no taxis, there's no motorbike taxis. In the old days, you'd have to walk half a mile to get to the main road and flag somebody down. Whereas now, like I've just said, you can order it on the app. And uh, the other big game changer, of course, you're not wondering about the fare because when you order it, it tells you this journey will be 110 baht do you wish to book or 60 baht yes i do and then you can you know when the driver gets there he's not going to try and cheat you because he knows that you know how much the fare is so you can say to yourself right well when we get there if he's a pleasant guy i'll give him 20 baht a 20 baht no and and it's just so much easier yeah and like you said there they can't cheat you because you know how much it is beforehand mm. um my condo uh just a slight diversion my condo is actually it's like a really big condo complex uh there's like four condos in this condo complex and it takes me like five minutes to walk from my condo to the main road just to get to mm. the road um i had a couple of bad experiences with grab actually um about a year ago really maybe maybe it was maybe 
was that a year ago or two years ago? Mm-hmm. Um, so when I get in the grab and I get the price and I, and I go to my destination, it doesn't, in, it wasn't including the toll fares. So it was the price not including the toll fares. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough because it won't, because when you book that taxi, it will assume that you don't want to pay for the tolls and it's giving you the cheapest possible journey. You don't have to go on the tollways. If you tell the driver, I don't want to go on the tollways because I don't want to pay for the tollways, he'll still get you to your destination, but he'll want to take the tollway because it's going to be quicker for him and he'll be able to drop you off and pick up another fare. So he'll ask you, and if you say, yes, I want to go on the toll fare, you will have to pay for it because that's an extra. Yeah. Well, my, dr- my driver took, my drivers were taken, it happened to me, not once, not twice, like three or four times, my drivers would take the tollway. I was like, okay, no problem, I'll give you the money. So when we arrive at my destination, I'd hand them the money for the, the toll. And this is this is not about tipping, by the way. This is just a slight, this is talking about something else slightly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and then after like th- um, two months or three months, I, f- I looked back at my Grab app and I found that after the destina- after we had arrived at my destination, the driver had autom- had added in manually uh, the toll fares. So I'd been paying for the toll fares twice and this happened to me. Um, it's happened to me like four times. So yeah. I was paying, paying for it, paying for it. it. It would take the money for the, the ride and uh, take the money from my card for the tolls. And then I'd also pay cash for the tolls. So that happened a couple of times. Yeah. What I do myself, I'll give him the money for the toll at the end when I pay the fare because they fully expect that. Uh, and it sounds like he just, he was just out to cheat you and he thought he could get away with it. Just out of interest, did he get away with it or did you pull him up on it or what happened? It happened four times, different drivers. And you paid it? Yeah, I paid that. So well, ne- paid... next time, just try when, you know, when you got a paper pool, just tell him I'll pay at the end and, yeah. and let him pay and then get the total bill at the end. That's what I do. Yeah, um, I was paying at the end with the, with my, it was paid through my credit, my card, my bank card. Ah, okay. And then okay. They'd, they'd bill the bank card for an extra 40 or 50 baht, whatever the toll was. Plus I was giving him cash because I didn't know he was billing the card. Mm, mm. It's a le- lesson. Yeah, a bit naughty. Yeah. Uh, another one, uh, tipping delivery drivers. Uh, grabbing Food Panda and many more of these services are more and more common uh, in the last two years. Definitely there's a massive um, rise in these delivery companies uh, when, when mm-hmm. COVID hit and the lockdown started, right? I think that's worldwide not just in thailand and these delivery drivers uh you know sometimes they're they're in the rain sometimes they're um late at night you maybe at one o'clock in the morning two o'clock in the morning i'll call them up and ask for something and also for me with these delivery drivers when covid started and uh the lockdown started i felt that this was a very uh a vital service I'll just move down so you can see the what I wrote. Mm-hmm. I, f- I felt it was like a vital service, so mm-hmm. I would I started tipping delivery drivers twenty baht, and if it was raining, if it was heavily raining, uh, and the roads were flooded and things like that, I'd maybe give them like thirty baht or forty baht, just to say thank you for their for their service at, at this difficult time, uh, and they were they were a lifeline for many at, at this time. Do you do you order food uh, a lot when you're in Thailand? Is that something? No. That- Normally I don't, but on my last trip I tested positive and I had to isolate for a week. It was self-isolation. They didn't tell me to go to hospital. They told me not to leave my room. Uh, so I did. Uh, I mean, I didn't let the staff in to clean the room. I just told them to hang towels and water on the outside. I basically tried to tidy it up as best as I could while I was in there. And um, I did order uh, pizza and stuff like that. And yet I didn't get a chance to actually tip the guys because they'd leave it outside the room and, um, you know, clear off basically uh, so you know i didn't open the door while they were there so i didn't get the opportunity but in answer to the question do i would i tip them yeah absolutely again because they're just so they're just paid so low you know uh, one side of the argument could be well you're not a charity you don't owe them a living but these guys are out there like you said sun and rain you know whatever it takes and it's long hours you know and they're, they're paid a, a pittance really and for you to stick 20 bar even 10 baht on top of your bill. You imagine how many deliveries they do in a day. If everybody gave them 20 baht, it would give them a much better lifestyle. And yet 20 baht to us is, you know, it's peanuts. Yeah. Uh, you were just saying that we don't know how much they get um, per day. Uh, 
when I'm ordering some from somewhere nearby, the delivery fee is only like 10 or 20 baht. So I'm not sure if they get more than that or if, or if they only get 10. Like maybe the, the, the app says it's just 10 baht delivery. We pay 10 baht and maybe the restaurant pays 10 baht. I'm not sure because I think 10 baht is really, really low. So mm. if I, but just in case, uh, if, if they're only getting 10 baht, I give them 20 baht on top of that just, just to make it worth their while. Mm. Uh, it's only like a five minute or 10 minute delivery, but 10 baht isn't going to buy anything. I, I don't know the mechanics of it. I don't know how the breakdown is. I don't know if that's just a fee and they get a salary or do they get the, the 10 bar and the restaurant gets a 10? I don't know. Yeah. So that's why I just give them an extra 20 bar just to make sure. I think it's fair to say I, I tip everybody when I'm there. If I get a haircut, I give them a tip. If mm. I take a taxi, I give them a tip. If I go for a meal, I give them a tip. If I'm in a bar, I give them a tip. It's just It's just the culture out there, isn't it? I've seen guys out there who have tried to live without tipping anybody and they become unpopular very very fast because it's thai culture isn't it mm. yeah and, and even the ties tip ties you know it's just it's not just us yeah uh like you said it's part of the culture now um did it come from europe or did it come from america but it's now or even did it come from somewhere else not not a western country it's now mm. part of thai culture so a lot of people who come over maybe before you come over you'll research on youtube and you'll research about Thai language, maybe you research about Thai massage, what is Thai massage, you'll research about, not a lot of people know, maybe some people don't know when they arrive, about tipping culture, it's not until they're at their hotel and uh, the guy's hoofing their, their luggage out of the back of the, the taxi and he's like standing there like, oh, am I supposed to tip? A lot. Some people might not know that Thailand is a tipping country. Mm. And he doesn't just drop your bag off, though, does he? When he takes you to the hotel, he shows you the air con, all the lights, he opens a curtain for you, shows you how the in-room in, in room safe works, shows you the channels on the TV. I mean, you, you get your money's worth. <laughs> yeah, and he's doing that for a reason. Well, yeah, uh, but he gives you the service, doesn't he? Before I came to Thailand, um, I didn't know it was a tipping culture. I, I assumed, like, I knew America. Uh, people give tips in America, but apart from that, uh, maybe Canada. I wasn't sure about like other countries. Mm, mm. Uh, so yeah, I think. I think tipping. I think tipping's changing. I mean, even in the UK now, I think tipping's becoming a bit more prevalent than it used to be. I know delivery drivers. You know, if you order a Chinese or something like that, most people give them a couple of pounds on top of the the meal. Um, you know, if you're gonna get your haircut, I I don't always leave a tip for the hairdresser, but because it's the same one every time. Sometimes I'll. I'll give them five pounds. You know, you can't give them a hundred baht like in Thailand. Uh, but it, it's becoming more more prevalent here now. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that because I've not been back to the UK for about 10 years. So uh, yeah. is it becoming more and more prevalent in the UK? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But you'll just, you know, if you can't afford to tip, you can't afford to tip, can you? You know, that's why, like, you know, if you go to Thailand and you're in a position where you can't afford to tip, then should you really be going on holiday to Thailand? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, the next one I have here is uh, tipping the hotel cleaners. Um, so just for ex just want to tell you right now that um, these are the things when I think about tipping people, these are the things that come to mind. There's obviously more uh, situations where you can and cannot tip, but these are the, I think maybe for tourists coming to Thailand, these would be some of the most common ones. So you're staying yeah. in a hotel, maybe staying in more than one hotel, uh, you, so do you tip the, the bellboy? Do you tip the, the hotel cleaners? Do you tip the reception staff? Uh, for me, uh, tipping hotel cleaners seems like, uh, something that, uh, people would like to do or do, 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 um, visiting Thailand on holiday, traveling around your store to stay at a number of hotels over your stay, uh, and staying at a number of different hotels. If you travel around, uh, maybe you'll stay one week in one hotel, one week in another hotel. Maybe you go to Phuket, maybe you go to Bangkok. You're going to experience different levels of customer service. And maybe maybe one of the experiences you get, um, you want to give them a tip. So usually if I'm going to tip a cleaner, uh, I'll usually leave like 30 baht, 40 baht on like, the, there's like a little wooden tray, maybe mm. like... Um, maybe for the tea or something like that. Or if the cleaner comes in and I'm, I'm in the room, usually I wake up, 
usually I'll sleep all day and wake up quite late. If the cleaner comes in late, I'll just hand them the, the money directly, right? I've heard before that um, if you just leave money like on the table, whether it's a tip or not a tip, the cleaners will take that thinking it's a tip. So it's best not to leave like money lying around. No, I haven't found that. All right. The other thing is uh, usually the cleaners, though, with hotels, the, the, the checkout times like 12 o'clock. Is that right? So the cleaners will come up to the room and they'll, they'll change the bed sheets, probably uh, empty the bins and uh, maybe brush the floor or something like that. And then one o'clock, two o'clock, they're finished. They've done all the rooms. They're finished. I usually sleep during the day and I wake up at six o'clock, seven o'clock, and then I'll go out and, and uh, party all night. But if I, if I do that for like two or three nights in a row and I've not changed the bed sheets because the cleaners haven't come in because I was sleeping, um, I, go to, I go downstairs and I try to get the, the cleaners to come up. I'll give them maybe a hundred baht because mm. they're doing it out of their shift, right? Uh, do you tip the cleaners? Yeah, but for totally selfish reasons. Um, just one thing I want to uh, add in to something you just said there. You know, I think most people, when they get small coins, one barts, five barts, they just put them in an ashtray or some pot in the room and they forget about them because nobody wants to take out five bart, one bart. And they'll, over your, the course of your stay, they'll build up and you could have 80, 90 bart, 100 bart in small coins. So when people leave, they assume, oh, well, the cleaners will get that. I'll let the cleaners have that. But it's not, it's not always the case because, like you said, when you check out, the first thing they'll do, they'll call up to housekeeping because they send somebody to the room to make sure you haven't smashed up the TV or broken something or there's nothing missing from the mini bar. So I would assume that the first person who goes into that room is going to take them coins. That's the first thing. Now, as far as tipping the cleaners go, I, I do tip, but it's for selfish reasons. Now, what used to really annoy me was... If I, I don't sleep all day, not nowadays, uh, I used to years and years ago. But what annoys me is if I wake up at, say, half past 10, 11 o'clock, I go out for lunch, uh, I'm out for a couple of hours, and I think, well, when I come back at 1 o'clock, the room's clean, new sheets, everything's nice. What used to really annoy me is when I came back after lunch and I came to the room at 1 o'clock and it was still dirty, and then, you know, it had, the towels hadn't been changed, the bed hadn't been made, I'd have to sit there when they eventually come and sit there. You know what it's like, you're sitting in a room while they're trying to clean it. So what I would do is I would look for the cleaner. Uh, you know, they're normally hanging around. Uh, if I went out at 11.30, for instance, for lunch, 12 o'clock, I, I would give 100 baht and show her my room key and say, you can clean, please. Uh, and they'd go straight to it because you've given her 100 baht. So if they've got a round where they, they're working through the rooms and yours is like number eight, for instance, if you approach her, give her 100 baht and say, oh, you can, can do my room. They'll, they'll do yours next. So the likelihood of you coming back in the room not being made up is, is very unlikely, actually. Uh, and that's a really good tip if you, if, you know, if you don't want to come back to a room that hasn't been made up. Yeah, that sounds really good, actually. Um, I've never done that before. If you want speedy service, definitely yeah, yeah. have them 100 bucks. Not every day. I don't do it every day. But if I, if I can hear the cleaner or I see the cleaner, sometimes I do take a chance. Sometimes it's done, sometimes it's not. But if the cleaner's on the same corridor or I can hear her on the next floor, then I, I will make a beeline because, again, it's 100 baht, £2.50. And for me, it's worth paying that just to – other people will argue and say, well, you're paying for the room, it should be included. Yeah, of course, it is included. But, you know, if you're a bit impatient or you don't want to sit around, then, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to pay for it. I think that's fine. Um, like you said, uh, risk taking the chance. Sometimes the cleaners, mm. they won't come in if, um, if you're in the room. They assume that that's a good point. Clean. Yeah, and that's a good point you made actually, because they'll knock off about they'll finish work normally about four o'clock in Thailand in the hotel. So if you leave your room at five, it won't get cleaned until the following day. Whereas if you go up to if you go to reception, say, look, could you send the cleaners up at six o'clock in the evening, for instance? Uh, they will, they will. And you, you don't always have to tip them, but you you do definitely have to ask them. Mm. With my, uh, I was. Um, usually I'm, I'm traveling around, I'll, I'll often be with my Thai girlfriend and she also, we, if we go out together, she'll also uh, sleep late as well. And mm. uh, she'll say, can you go get the cleaner to come here uh, and clean the room? Because they haven't been coming to the room for two days, maybe even three days. They did because we were in the room, we were sleeping, they didn't want to wake us up. Mm. So I have, I'll physically have to wake up and go get the cleaner to come. And then, like you said, it's quite awkward, you're sitting there in the room, or maybe you have to go out, go out the room and stand outside the room while they clean it for 10, 15 minutes, right? 
Mm. Uh, it can be a bit awkward, even if you've been up all night, especially if you've been up all night and um, you're tired and you actually just want to sleep, but you need the room cleaned. You're standing mm. there half half hangover, half still asleep, waiting for them to clean the room and then go back to sleep again when they leave. Yeah, it's not too bad if you've got a balcony because you can go and sit on the balcony and drink a coffee while they're in the room. But when you're actually physically sitting in the room trying to, and they're trying to work around you, it's, it's a bit uncomfortable for them as well as you. Mm. You know the answer, don't you? Get up a bit earlier, don't sleep all day. Yeah. You see, uh, I've been to Thailand, uh, I've been coming to Thailand for 10 years and uh, it wasn't until last year that I actually got to the beach because really? <laughs> because I always just go out, drink all night till four o'clock in the morning and sleep all day till like six, seven o'clock, then go We've out all, there. all night. Yeah. We've all been there, yeah. <laughs> um, tipping in bars and restaurants. So this is, this is a, oh, I've got one more. Um, tipping in bars and restaurants. Um, you mentioned this earlier about the, the change that give you a mm. big stack of like 20 bat notes. Mm -hmm. If they give well, you coins, back, coins. Oh yeah. They, well, sometimes they give you notes, and sometimes they give you coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, if you if they give you a hundred baht in change and a hundred baht note, you're less likely to uh, tip if you don't have any change. But if they mm. give you your hundred baht change in twenties, you're, you're more likely to give a, a tip, right? And what they'll do, what they'll do, if they're going to give you a hundred, say the change just for easy numbers is a hundred baht. So they've got the choice; they can either give you a hundred baht. Or they can give you a 50 baht, two 20s and a 10, but they won't do any of that. What they'll do, they'll probably give you 60 baht, three 20 baht notes, and they'll give you 40 baht in change because they know when they put the tray in front of you, most guys on holiday are likely to pick those three 20 baht notes up, put them in the pocket, and they'll say, that's fine, thank you. They'll leave the change. So they've got 40 baht instead of what would have been 10 baht. Yeah. I might even leave the change and then just give them 20 baht just because I couldn't be bothered counting the, the coins. Mm. Mm. Um, but also on top of that, well, not on top of that, um, opposed to that, when eating and drinking in some restaurants, there's there's different kinds of restaurants. There's some very expensive restaurants, and there's also your um, street, almost like a street vendor kind of restaurant. Some, mm. so in the the street vendor restaurants, like you said, you give them twenty baht, thirty baht. Some restaurants uh, and some bars will actually add the tip to the the bill. So that your your final bill will have like a ten percent or maybe even higher uh, percentage of, of what you spent already added into the the bill. I think that's very common in America. Um, yeah, not like we said is. earlier, not so much in the UK, but maybe, maybe more so. Maybe more. I think it's more and more common in the UK. Um, and on top of that, you don't need to pay any tip. That that is your tip. Mm. Um, do you... Yeah, I'm very uncomfortable with those sort of restaurants for the simple reason it's just um, I, I, I don't like it because they work like you said they work the tip into the bill so in theory you've paid for your food the tip is quite clearly seven, whatever I don't know what it is 7% 10% 15% so your tip is there so in theory you think well he's had the tip I don't have to leave anything but I'm uncomfortable with that because I'm not always sure that they get all of the money that they should get and it just feels it doesn't feel right for me to get up and not leave something for the waitress or the waiter. Yeah, I just don't feel comfortable with that. I'm, I'm, I'm similar in that it feels uncomfortable, but I'm for, coming from a different angle, is that tipping is supposed to be your saying thank you for the good customer service. But if they automatically put it into the bill, what if the customer service wasn't good? And then exactly. you feel like you're exactly. giving them a tip that, they, they don't, that you didn't want to give them. Mm. So you just have to be careful when if anyone's coming to Thailand if they're just to have a look at the bill to see if it has a. This only happens in like the upper upscale restaurants, but if you have a look at the bill to see if uh, if you've added a tip in automatically. Mm. And uh, I've got one more. The massage shops. Tipping in massage shops. Uh, another popular holiday activity for tourists coming to Thailand is uh, Thai massage. So I thought I'd add this in as well. Uh, a lot of people who come over to Thailand, they want to experience the Thai massage and maybe they would like to know how much to tip. So the, the Thai massage, uh, traditional Thai massage or maybe like a um, oil massage, are, they're not too expensive. It's maybe like 300 baht or 400 baht, sometimes cheaper than that. Mm. And uh, 
So how much are you going to tip? They're going to give you a massage for an hour. So if, if I'm only paying 300 baht, 400 baht, I wouldn't, I, I like to think that I shouldn't give too much, um, maybe 50 baht. But because the massage is for, for an hour, uh, I feel that I should tip a little bit more. I usually give like 100 baht. And obviously, like uh, it depends on how good the, the massage was, but usually they, they work quite hard. Um, another kind of massage that, that uh, you can, people can get in Thailand is your naughty massage or your happy ending massage. This is usually more expensive. It starts about 500 baht, commonly 800 baht, um, sometimes higher. So when I'm, if I was to get one of these massages, um, I would give at least 100 baht, usually round up to like 1,000 baht. Do you have any experiences with... Uh, with uh... Yeah, sure, I've gone for massages. Not the uh, happy ending ones, but I've gone for massages. And uh, what people might not realise, you know, they'll look at the sign outside, Thai, traditional Thai oil massage, 300 baht. The girl doesn't get that. You know, she's working as a kind of freelancer in that massage shop with the other girls. And typically what will happen is if the, if the massage itself is 300 baht, the charge, the owner of the shop, the massage parlor, will get 200 baht because they pay all the bills, the air con, the rent, everything. And the girl gets 100. So you're going in thinking, well, she's getting 300. She get, she's only actually getting 100, uh, mm -hmm. which isn't a lot, really. You, how many massages can you do in a day? There's a lot of girls working in each shop, so they have their turns unless somebody particularly picks that girl. Um, so tipping, yeah, they, they do rely on tips. And when I have gone for massages, I've always left 100 baht um, because I just I like to help people and I just feel, you know, the position. I mean, I'm not rich, but I'm in a better position than they are. And if she spent 45 minutes an hour, you know, on a real nice massage, I come out feeling good. Again, £2.50, why not? Um, they, don't, they don't make a lot of money, those girls. As far as the other massage you're talking about there, then that would be their money because, uh, you know, all, all they have to pay, when well, you go in and pay your 300 baht, the shop gets 200, she gets 100, anything extra in the room that you're talking about, then obviously that will go straight in her pocket. Um, and most guys who do that, I would imagine are happy when they leave us. It wouldn't be called a happy ending. So they're, they're more likely to tip anyway. Mm, yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, it's a good point. You mentioned that uh, sometimes it, uh, I forget that um, how much of the, the money would go towards the the staff and how much of it actually goes to the is it overheads things like that so an extra if you're if you're paid if someone's paying sorry if uh, the massage staff are getting 100 baht and you're and someone's tipping a, a 100 baht um you're almost like doubling their their daily salary which which is good because as we said earlier that they're that a lot of them are on minimum wage five, almost 500 like 400 500 baht uh, a day right so yeah and, and, and something else that's important to add in here is if somebody's coming over and they don't have any experience with Thailand don't forget it's not like that girl's making money for herself that's it you know she's just paying for a mobile phone and a next gold chain all all Thai girls are normally supporting their families they send all the money back home to rural farming communities and some of them have children they're definitely supporting mothers fathers uh, they work but they're up there but they're they're on really pitifully low money so any money they send up is that they're grateful for and that's what they do so um i'm not saying you should have a bleeding heart and give them more money but it's just to let everyone aware that they're doing it for other reasons rather than to get the latest mobile phone mm. um and every little helps right i mean it's, like you said earlier if it's shouldn't we shouldn't be thinking that we're a charity but uh if you if you've got if you can spare an extra 10 20 by it, it does help I, I like tipping. I enjoy tipping. Like I said earlier, I'm not rich, but if I go out in an evening, I budget tips into my night out. So I'll, I'll think, okay, I'll probably spend, if I go out drinking in bars, I'm thinking I might spend 1,500, 2,000 baht tonight. How many bars will I go in? I might go in half a dozen bars and I want to leave 100 baht. And I, you know, I'll, I'll budget it and, and, and I enjoy tipping it. You know, people, are, when you tip the ties, they're happy. They'll give you a big beaming smile. They'll why you. And it's just, I like that feeling, you know. I don't, yeah. I don't look at them and think he's look, that she's looking at me like I'm some kind of a sucker. I don't think in that way. I give her the tip. She gives me a smile. I'm happy to help. And uh, it makes me feel good about myself, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm exactly the same. Uh, you, Thailand's famous for that big smile, right? The land of smiles. Oh, no, definitely. You know, and as I said uh, in the beginning of your stream, Paul, you know, if you're, if you're so hard up, you're going out there on a, such a tight budget that you can't leave 
you know, somebody who's been looking after your few bar, then really, should you be going to Thailand or should you have two weeks at Butlin, Skegness or something? Yeah. Uh, and as you said, also, if you can bu uh, budget in, that's even better. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I've got one more thing just to say and then we'll finish. Uh, when not to tip, uh, and I've got a couple of uh, points here. Uh, I've got a great that, example at the end when you're finished, when not to tip. All right. Uh, the obvious one first is uh, tipping is used to give a member of staff money as a way of thanking them for their good customer service. So if you are getting bad customer service, then you should really not tip. Um, tell, what, what's your example? Well, uh, I don't want to take over your stream, Paul, but I'll give no, you a no. good example. This happened to me on my last trip. You know, I was there in December. Uh, I will not tip if somebody tries to rip me off. And I'll yeah. give you a great example. I won't name the bar, but it's a famous bar around the Sukhum bit area. Mm. I arranged to meet a friend. It's an open beer bar, basically, uh, that has a pool table. So I, I arranged to meet a friend there, and um, they were very, very late. They didn't – well, originally they, they were late. I thought they were late, and then in the end they didn't turn up. But it, I went in. I've ordered my beer. I sat there, and, you know, they have the girls hanging around. They'll play pool with you, or they, they play the games on the bars. And a girl said to me, do you want to play pool? And I'm yeah, I'll have a game of pool with you. Now, she was drinking a glass of red wine, which is unusual uh, in the beer bars. And um, so I was playing pool with her. That's all it was. And uh, I finished my beer. And I, I said, would you like another wine? Because I know she gets a percentage of that money. And she's spending her time playing pool with me. So why not? You know, nobody does anything for free, right? And uh, so I know she had she she'd only had the one wine. She told me that was her first wine. I bought her one wine. So when I asked for the bill, somebody hand wrote on the bill about seven of these glasses of wine which was a hundred and i think they were 160 baht a glass mm. and i said to i called him over and i said she hasn't had these you know you've got on here six glasses of red wine she hasn't had these you know she had bought herself one i bought a one for playing pool with me and that's it and they argued the toss with me and in the end they brought this manager of a female real hard nut and she did the usual thing she started shouting and getting all loud and you know trying to get support that way and i i kept my calm and i just said look I said to the girl, how many drinks had you had when I met you? She said, one. I said, how many drinks have I bought you? She said, one. I said, so she's had two drinks. Well, they couldn't get out of that. So she just snatched the bill from me like I was doing something wrong, mm. went off, adjusted it. It was 1,800 baht to start with. It came back at 1,200 baht because you have to pay for the pool and everything. And I'd been there a good couple of hours. My friend didn't turn up, and I actually enjoyed playing the pool. So she snatched the bill out of my hand like I was doing something wrong after shouting at me. No apologies for mistake or anything because it was an obvious ripoff. She goes off, adjusts the bill, comes back and it's 1200 I didn't check it again, but there was 600 or something like that off the bill. Um, she brought the change and some of it was in coins or one of her staff brought the change. And I made sure I didn't only <laughs> take the notes. I picked up every single coin on that trade to make a point because they'd, they'd gone out of their way to rip me off. They'd handwritten that on the bill. So I made a point. It wasn't that I was so hard up and needed those coins, but I took every coin out of that tray I walked out and I never went back there. And that's when I, that's the only time I won't tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. No, no, I like that story. I, I can imagine myself doing exactly the same. Every single bat, if it falls on the floor and it rolls underneath one of the, the counters, I'll be trying to get that one bat back. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, if somebody tries to rip you off, I mean, most places don't try to rip you off. It's not that common. Um, but that was, that was blatant, you know, and, uh, the top tip I'd give anybody who visits Thailand who hasn't been there before is if you get into some kind of an altercation like that, keep absolutely calm. Don't raise your voice like you would in your own country because you'll lose any respect that the Thais had for you because they they just, you know, just keep cool. And a lot of the time it's better to just walk away. I wouldn't have walked away from an extra charge of, you know, what was that, $15 or something, $10. But um, if it had been 100 baht extra, I'd have just left it. I wouldn't have even mentioned it because it's not worth it. Yeah, you said earlier, we talked earlier as well about taxi drivers and um, uh, possibly sometimes they try to rip people off. And uh, I've had a few bad experiences. If it's only like 10, 20 baht, sometimes uh, they'll say, oh, I don't have change. And and then you're like, well, that's your job to have change. If it's not too much, I'll just try not to get angry with them. and I'll just leave and then try not to let it yeah. make up, upset my uh, my day, right? Uh, if you get uh, angry with them, sometimes you can get you can get in um, altercations. 
there's thousands of taxis in Bangkok. You know, if you're not using Gram and you just jump in one and he won't put the meter on, just just get out and get the next one. If he won't put his meter on, get out of that one and get the next one, you know. But let me ask you a question, if I may, Paul. It's your interview. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to take over. No, no, no. So if, and, and then I'll give you my reply. So if you had to name, if, if you were in a corner and someone said to you, out of everything in Thailand, bars, girls, massage, delivery drive, if you had to name the one biggest ripoff industry or people, who would you say is the biggest ripoff out of everybody? You can only pick one. Which industry or person or and and then I'll I'll give you mine after yours. Um, Just choose one that you that you've been caught with a lot. Yeah, well, mostly it's uh, taxi drivers. Yeah, mine's very close. It's tuk tuk drivers yeah. because of course tuk tuks don't have any meters. They're a lot less than they used to be now because of all the uh, infrastructures improved over the years and uh, they'll just quote you they'll quote you silly silly prices and um they they're such a rip off i think if you've never been to thailand before take a tuk tuk but get get the price fixed before you go anywhere because they're a lot of fun to experience whizzing through bangkok at 10 o'clock at night with a warm air uh you know going through your hair is great a great experience but i, I personally don't use them as regular transport there's no need to now you've got bts uh sky train you've got the underground and you've got grab so yeah um the reason why i never said uh tuk tuks is because i never used them uh before no. i came i did my research and i heard there's a lot of scams so yeah, um, yeah. i stick to taxis but yeah if you want to try it one time just uh be careful a lot of good yeah. advice uh in today's stream um i've got just wrap it up here tipping in thailand is a common is commonplace for those not familiar with tipping culture in their home countries or a different tipping culture from uh that of thailand's when, where, and how much to tip may not be immediately clear. Uh, tipping shouldn't be stressful, and a few easy tips can help you keep on track. And uh, maybe, um, if in doubt, a simple 10% rule should uh, should suffice. Do you think that's uh, okay? Do you think that's too much? I personally don't have any percentage rule. I it, It's purely on what I want to give. I don't have a fixed percentage where I go out and think, right, I'm going to, if the bill's a thousand baht, I'm giving a hundred baht. If it's a hundred baht, I'm giving 10 baht. I don't do that. It depends how long I'm in a place for, how happy I am with the service or not happy. Uh, and generally it's, it's very difficult to find bad service in, in Thailand. You know, you go into a bar or restaurant, they're pretty good. They're pretty good overall. Yeah. Some, uh, uh, customer services, maybe it could be quite a new thing here. In, I think in Thailand, would you say? Yeah. Um, mm. and it's always, uh, improving i think uh today um i thank you for coming on our, our live stream today and uh yeah thank you for having of, me paul a lot of good advice um i'm going to link to your channel i've actually got a link here what we'll do is we'll put the video here in the blog as well and i'll, yeah, I'll send to you your, that to your youtube channel and um earlier we talked about um you've got some uh videos on your youtube that have like top 20 things not to do and things to do so we'll in the goggle bars well. yeah I'll, I'll send you a link to that cheers very much yeah um thanks very much peter it was a You're pleasure welcome, Paul. yeah and, and just to let any of your viewers know mm -hmm. we will be doing uh i'll be interviewing you probably sometime next week for my channel good stuff something to look forward to yeah uh thanks very much okay and until next time yeah bye, -bye. cheers thank you Mm-hmm. <laughs>